Hey everyone, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and today we're going to be looking over NZXT's new H200i Mini ITX case. Um, ITX cases have become a lot more popular in the past few years with new offerings with motherboards and just a little bit better uh, cases in the just whole ITX realm. So, very excited to see a new one from NZXT. They've had one in the past with the Manta, but today we look at the new H200i and see what all it can take care of, handle, and if it is a good case. Let's dig in. Today's video is brought to you by Samsung. If you're looking for the fastest speeds, not only in your games, but across your entire system, there's nothing better than a Samsung 960 Pro for the job. Learn more about them in the link in the description. So to start things off, let's actually talk about the, uh, the glass panel, which I've just removed that you saw on a second ago. The glass panel actually has um, a black border painted around it, which helps kind of cover up anything that's underneath um, the edging and the framing of the case itself, which is a good touch. The, also, the glass sits on these little feet, so it doesn't just, you don't have to like really hold it, hold it on. You can simply just really set it on and then screw in um, the actual screws that come with it, but it does come off and you do get a nice tempered glass panel So that is one nice thing about the case just off the bat. It's always nice to see some tempered glass So um, then looking at the rest of the machine um, Things might look a little bit tight But we'll talk about all the components in here too briefly while we kind of look and see what all you could house Inside the machine. So first things first as I mentioned um, We have a mini ITX motherboard because that's the only motherboard form that you will fit inside of this case We do have a full-size graphics card though with a EV VGA GeForce 1070 super clocked, so um, plenty of room for it to also have a front mounted radiator. We have a 240 in here um, with fans on the front side of it, so you can fit, you know, a 240 mil radiator. I believe you could actually fit a 280. It would get very, very, very tight though, so I think a 240 is the way you want to go. Um, full size graphics card. If you do decide to do a short graphics card, there's actually a cutout in the power supply shroud cover, so you can actually run your, um, your PCIe cable for power up to here if you want to come through the bottom. So you do have that option um, from there. We do have a two and a half inch drive in the very front um, that your cables can go through. There's a hole cut out behind this section here and this whole panel of metal that's white can actually be removed. So if you want to take that out while you're building, you can and get your cables um, managed or, or run through there. There's that hole to run your uh, power and then both your SATA so it goes to your motherboard. And so you can mount one two and a half inch drive on the front to kind of have it on display in the very front of your case, which I do like that um, option. Now the case itself comes with two fans. There comes with one in the back and one in the top. They're NZXT's fans. The ones I have in here are slightly different. These are actually NZXT's fans, but these are their air fans, the RGB ones. Ones. So um, those aren't typically what you see. You just get some nice black fans, but you do get two that come with the case. And then the top fan actually has a filter that's above it. Um, so you don't have to really worry about dust coming in the top of your machine and getting into the rest of it while your machine's off. One thing I will say though is that filter is only removed and only put in place when you actually screw in the fan itself to hold it in between them. So if you want to take it out, you have to unscrew the whole fan. And screwing in the fan with that just kind of little mesh in the way is kind of annoying and it kind of feels a little bit like an afterthought. It does its job, but in the long run, you probably could just remove it if you think it's too much of a hassle. So one little thing that I wasn't a giant fan of. Now, another thing I do really, really like about the front of this case is the fact that along the top, there is a built-in RGB strip that plugs in to the smart controller that is in the back we'll take a look at in a second. And then off of it, there is actually a cable that runs down the front and you can plug in more NZXT uh, RGB strips, specifically the NZXT ones, and uh, run one into the bottom. So I actually have another strip from uh, the Hue kit that I already have and was able to run one more strip along the bottom. So it's nice to see that you can just plug straight off of it and it has a connector available and you can just run it across the bottom if you don't wanna have the NZXT Hue actually in the back of your machine. I still have mine in the back of mine, but we'll get to the reasons why in a second. So that's pretty much the front of the case and the layout. You have your, you know, one fan in the top, one in the back, two in the front, and that's all the fans you really can have. I guess you could do push-pull if you had a shorter card here. You do have enough room in the cutout in the shroud to do push-pull on a radiator, but you'd have to have a shorter graphics card to do so. But the nice thing is, with some of the extra room around in here, you could actually run a hybrid card if you wanted to run one and then put a radiator in the back or maybe even in the top. Probably would want to put that in the back and you could have front radiator 
and rear radiator for support and room. So overall in the front of the case, um, pretty good room, sufficient room, and pretty easy to work with overall. So definitely um, some really good highlighting points here and it looks good with the glass. And then of course you have all the pr uh, those holes poked in the side where all your air intake comes in through both the front sides and actually at the bottom. Now, if we actually take a look at the front of the machine, you can see it's that solid piece um, of metal that it's at the front, that's steel. You do have a soft, subtle NZXT logo in the very, very front. And then the front panel, if you take your hand and you put it right underneath the front, it does pull off. You do have to do a bit of force and then it comes kind of flying at you, but it does come off nice and, well, I won't say easy, but it comes off without feeling like it's breaking. The very front of it, we do have that room. You can see how this is kind of raised and there's space between here so that air can get into those fans that can pull it in. Um, so we do have a little bit of space. We have also a actual filter that covers. It's got four clips on it, two at the bottom, two at the top, and then that will show you your front fans where they intake and let all that air come in through your radiator. So um, this whole bracket too, everything mounts to a bracket that can actually completely come out. So four thumb screws hold that entire piece of metal in. You just then put your fans and your radiator on it and you run it through and then you can have this kind of come on and off. So it's easier to work with instead of trying to put everything in the front and trying to screw it together then. You can work with it outside of the machine which is Definitely just a better feature and a lot easier for building overall. So definitely a good design feature there. Um, you do have slots here for 140 millimeter fans in the front. So I have 120s, but you could do two 140s if you want more airflow or bigger fans or if that's just what you have currently. So you do have that option, but I will say the 120 just works a little better, bit better because it's just a little bit smaller. So you have a little bit more room to work with. And I'll show you why that's important when we get to the back in just one second. So you do have your filter that obviously comes on and off. Really simple, really nice, a tight mesh. I don't see really a lot of dust getting through that. So another nice, just easy clip on, clip off type thing if you want to clean that off too, without really too much work to get to it itself. As for the top I.O., things are pretty simple. We have an indicator light for drive activity. We both have a microphone and a headphone 3.5 uh, jack in the front. And we have two USB 3.0. 0 ports along with a power and reset button that does light up white around it. Um, obviously the version of the case I have is the white and black one. They do make a red and black. I think they make a blue and black and just a all black case. So you do have options too if you want a certain color for finish. Um, so you do have a couple options which is really really nice if you're going for a specific look. And as we come around to the back side of the case, I've already kind of taken the back panel off. The back panel has three little clips that kind of it just slips into and they have two thumb screws that do say in place when you want to actually screw it in to the back of the chassis. Now, when you look at the back of the case, you can see things are fairly tight with at least my machine. Here we have NZXT's adaptive fan controller and RGB controller that comes with the case. Um, you do have fans and RGB strips that do plug directly into that, which is kind of nice. Um, it is neat that this is here. The only problem with this, in my opinion, is if you actually have NZXT products already, you run into the problem where there is no real hookup for this if you have their air fans, which means you still need to hide the NZXT hue somewhere else in your case. So I've hid mine actually back in the bottom of this machine. But we have cable management that comes across the top um, out here with your eight pin off your motherboard. Um, run that with the rest of your fans down the side and zip tie them in. You also have these small tracks that run across the top here and then down the side a little bit to help hide some of your wires or manage some of your cables for your fans that are both in the top and in the back. So I actually do really like that. I wish they were a little bit bigger, had different ways that co cables could fit into them because they're really tight because the air fans have the uh, the RGB wire with them as well that runs between each fan, and all of those start to add up as like twice the amount of actual cables, which is why it looks a little chaotic back here. The other other reason things look chaotic, I have an extender on my uh, actual um, 24 pin. The 24 pin with this SFX power supply that um, I purchased is just barely too short to actually reach from its location to the actual 24 pin connector on the motherboard. It is like this short of reaching all the way. So I just put an extender on it, um, which then also matches my other white cables. So kind of annoying. So if you wanna know specifically, this is the Corsair 600, which one is it? The SF 600 power supply. Um, it's an SFX power supply. Now this case does support both normal ATX power supplies and SF, SFX power supply. So that's a mouthful for some apparent reason. I don't know why. But um, it will support both. But I went with this because I needed the room for all of my other cables and some of my devices down in the very bottom. Now, you can put a three and a half inch hard drive in the bottom. There is a way to mount one. But 
doing that with a full ATX power supply is almost impossible, so I don't recommend doing that. Um, I think the SFX size is much better overall. In fact, here is the here is an ATX power supply, and you can see this is an RM800, which is a little, little bit bigger, but it will take up a lot of space in the very bottom of this machine. So this was not going to work with all the other cables and wires I have. So I definitely got a smaller power supply for that reason. We do have a bracket in the back here that holds two more two and a half inch drive size um, hard drive. So we have we just have one on there and then we have uh, you know an empty one open. We do have a PCIe drive on the motherboard itself. So we still have three drives in this machine right now, which is plenty um, of space for both media um, games and for our OS and other programs. Now we have some cable management um, running areas over here along as, with areas to zip tie all of your cables down from the front with your USB 3.0, your fans, and anything else that might be coming in. And then um, the other thing that makes this look all chaotic in the back when it comes to actual you know, fans is the problem with ITX motherboards, and I think I might make another video on this, is most of them do not have any 3. Point, or uh, sorry, 2.0 USB headers on them. They will have one USB 3.0 header for your front I.O., but you don't typically get any 2.0. And with the Hue and with most of your AIOs um, for RGB lighting or for control, or even other items in your machine, they want a USB 2.0 internal to plug in. And with none on your board, you have to find a creative way to get around that. I have by using NZXT's um, controller down here in the bottom that is their uh, internal 2.0 extender. So with a bunch of different conversions and a bunch of different cables that are converting in and out of 3.0 to 2.0 and then all across the board, I was able to get everything plugged in and everything working. It is a confusing mess and like I said, I will make another video because I think people building on an ITX platform will run into this problem if they want to have lots of things in their machine which is typically something you won't do with an ITX computer, but um, if you wanna have all those extra things and all your RGB working and all of your pumps and everything just running all the time, then you kind of need an extender and a specific way to do it, and I will explain that in a whole nother video. So pay attention to that coming up in the future if you wanna learn how to get around the issue where ITX motherboards don't have enough 2.0 um, USB headers on them, or any at all, really. So. This is the back. I think everything fits. I really wish the back panel though did have um, kind of like a, a, a raised back panel so that your cables would fit a little bit nicer. It's a little tight to put the back panel on, but I can get it on, no massive issues. And like I said, if you're doing a much more simple system, you have less RGB lighting or fans with less cables or not as many things to plug in, it'd be a lot easier to work with the space in the back. I do like that there are some clever bits to mounting and for some cable management and uh, space, but definitely you're gonna wanna go with the SFX size power supply overall, and there is a bracket that supports that, or you take the bracket out and it supports a full size power supply. So you do have options there too. So overall, you know, it is a solid area to work with, but it does start to get a little tight if you have a lot of stuff in your machine. So there you have it, a look at the new NZXT H200i ITX form factor case. Um, I like it a lot. I think things look good. I like how things look very full in it without being overly crowded, I'd say. Um, the back, there's always room for improvement with cable management almost on any case. Um, same can be said with this one, but it is an ITX form factor. You do have less to actually just work with up front. If you want a bigger um, form factor, but you like this style of case, the good news is that they have larger versions of this for an MATX board or just full ATX board support. So there are options, but overall for an ITX um, case, it's fairly small. It's not the smallest ITX case in the world, but it's pretty small. I think it looks great, and it's honestly pretty affordable. If you want to check it out, I'll leave you a link down below in the description. If you have any questions for me as well, go ahead and put them down there too. I will answer them the best that I can if I did happen to miss something or if you have a question about anything. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you could leave a like, I'd appreciate it. Subscribe for more future content, and I'll see all of you in the next one.